Hey guys! Did you know you can relax your hair with baking soda? Yep, it's becoming increasingly popular. There's all sorts of methods out there to achieve this. Some people mix baking soda in their shampoo, some mix it in their conditioner, and some people use it as a baking soda rinse. If you must, must, must do it, I'm going to show you the safest method and measurements possible and show you how to upkeep it so your hair doesn't make a turn for the worst. I'm also going to show you what's really happening to your hair when you put baking soda on it. So if you do decide to try it, you're not doing it blindly and you're making a more informed decision. If you haven't done so already, it's a good idea to watch the last video on the pros and cons of using baking soda on your hair. That video will help you understand what exactly baking soda is and how it interacts with your hair. I understand that caring for natural hair is a learning curve and that some of you get frustrated and want to find a way to slightly loosen up your texture without using a relaxer. I completely understand. It takes patience to learn something completely new and to wait for your hair to grow out. Baking soda is one of those alternatives that people have turned to. So here's what's happening to your hair when you put a concentrated amount of baking soda on it. The natural pH of everything outside your body is acetic. That's because the sebum produced in your sebaceous glands is acetic, with a pH ranging from four to sometimes six, and coats every inch of your body, including your hair. That's not a random thing, because an acetic environment keeps bad bacteria, fungus, and yeast that's naturally all around us from using our body as a host, growing out of control, and taking over. So an acetic environment is really important for maintaining balance. Apart from your skin and scalp, your hair strands also prefer an acetic environment to remain strong and stay intact. Your scalp is way more complicated because it's alive, but your hair strands are basically a dead fabric like silk or wool. So preserving and grooming it is what's important for length retention and appearance. There are many ways to damage your hair. In fact, every time you style your hair, you're inflicting some level of damage to it. But when it comes to pH, there's three ways you can damage your hair. One, you can use products that are too acetic outside the safe zone, which scars your cuticle layers, making them too tight and crunchy. Two, you can use products that are too alkaline, which lifts your cuticles and unravels its structure. And three, which is what a lot of people tend to leave out, is that you can use products that make your hair go through a dramatic pH swing. A pH swing is when you use a product that's really alkaline, which lifts your cuticles, and then attempt to close them back up with a product that's really acetic. This type of thing only works when both products are within the safe zone, not out. But I'll talk more about this in the next video. Anyway, overall, the further away you go from the safe zone on both sides, the more dramatic the damage is. But we all know damage to your hair is inevitable. What matters is how harsh or intense was the damage, how often do you damage it, and what counteractions do you take in your regimen to preserve your hair. With a pH of 9, the pH of baking soda is outside the safe zone in the alkaline territory. 9 is definitely not as bad as 10, 11, 12, 13, or 14, but for hair strands, a pH of 9 is very strong, so don't make the mistake of underestimating how much damage it can cause. A concentrated amount of baking soda on your hair is strong enough to not just lift your cuticles, but also strong enough to weaken your keratin bonds and start to unravel the structure of your hair at the cortex level. True, you're left with a looser texture, but you're also left with hair that's more fragile and more prone to breakage. With that said, if you're willing to take the risk, here's how to do it. Mix two tablespoons of baking soda to half a cup of conditioner. Why conditioner? Because it's the safest way to deliver baking soda to your hair. 
Then add two tablespoons of an organic oil of your choice to make it more lubricated. I'm adding the herbal hot oil treatment for its added benefits. Cleanse your hair as you normally would. Then coat your hair strands with the baking soda conditioner mixture. You can get close, but try to avoid your scalp as much as possible. Wear a shower cap and let it sit for 30 minutes. If you let it sit for longer, it will overprocess. No need for a hooded dryer or a steamer, just a shower cap. After you rinse it out, use a paper towel to remove excess water by squeezing the paper towel down the length of your hair until it's damp and not soaking wet. Then coat your hair and scalp with a high quality organic oil, preferably one that has penetration abilities, but don't use too much. My hair is really dense and thick, and this is how much oil I would use. After this process, put your hair in a style that doesn't cause too much tension to your strands, because the actual fabric of your hair has been weakened, so it's more prone to breakage. So for example, twists or a puff are okay, but braids are not. Here are some tips on how to preserve your hair and prevent it from taking a turn for the worse. Reduce the amount of tension you put on your hair strands. For example, if you're going to put it in twists, twist your hair looser than you normally would. Also, keep your hair well lubricated at all times. Also, do a real protein treatment on every wash day and follow the directions and measurements for high porosity hair. This will help keep the damaged areas of your hair patched up, but still flexible so it doesn't experience rapid damage. Now, if you want to loosen your texture even more, it's better to gradually build up rather than trying to achieve your desired result at once. So wait four to six weeks before doing it again. But I have to warn you, the more you do it, the more damage you're causing to your hair and it becomes harder and harder to preserve it. All right, here's the disclaimer, y'all. Your hair is most likely not gonna go from this to this. Even though your texture will slightly loosen, it's still going to be in the same curl pattern you have. For example, if you have a consistent Z pattern, it will go from this to this. If you have a consistent O or S pattern, it will go from this to this. But if you're like a lot of us and have more of a mix of patterns with kinks in between, it'll most likely go from this to this. So it's important to have realistic expectations if you plan on doing this. We are all different and vastly diverse, and you have the right to wear your hair any way you want. As long as you're not hurting yourself, I'm cool. This is an objective, judgment-free zone. So let me know below if this is something you wanna try. Or if you tried it already, what was your experience? I hope this video was helpful. As always, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.